everyone should come around the back. Desmond? Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for uh, being here at City Hall. My name is Michael Thompson, City Councilor. I'm actually joined this morning by a uh, group of uh, community advocates uh, representing, obviously, human rights, some of them are legal experts, uh, academics, and others who are very concerned about the issue as it relates to carding. In fact, uh, these individuals are actually calling on the minister uh, to make some changes to the draft regulation on street checks and carding. The minister has stated that his objectives are to ensure the end of arbitrary and the discriminatory practice of police street check. It is evident based on the information that has been released to date by the minister that those stated goals as it really as it relates to the draft regulation that's been released have not been fully achieved. I'm joined by a group of leading experts and advocates this morning to talk to you further and to explain their concerns on this most pressing issue that's facing Ontarians and Torontonians, particularly members of the black community, the young black young men and black women who are, in fact, not being treated fairly in their contacts with the Toronto Police Service. And let me say this, as a former vice chair of the Police Service Board, I have tremendous respect for men and women in policing. I know that there are very good people who work in this area. However, we know that there are times when the encounter has not been very positive, particularly for members of the black community in this city, and I suspect across the province. That has to change. That's why this group has joined me with me this morning to speak to you about their concerns with respect to the minister's draft regulation. And let me say this final point. While it is the minister's draft legislation or regulation, the buck will stop with the premier. Premier Wynne will have to be involved if the minister does not make the necessary changes. I would now like to call up on our MC, Mr. Desmond Cole, to lead the proceeding further. Desmond, would you can step forward, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson, and good morning. It's very good to see all of the media and supporters gathered here. It's a busy Monday morning, but we thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge Councillor Thompson and say thank you for your continued work and leadership at City Hall on this issue. We really appreciate it. Uh, as Councillor Thompson mentioned, the draft regulations proposed by Minister Knackley and the Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services um, have been submitted to us and the public to review. We're all concerned about the way in which the police are interacting with members of the public, the way that police are gathering information. We're also concerned about much broader issues of police brutality and racial profiling. I want to share a quick story with you before I turn to our first speaker. I was at an event at the University of Toronto recently where a young woman, a black student, approached me after a talk and she told me about the first time that she was carded by the police. She was 10 years old. Not only was she 10, she was actually inside of her home watching the police outside on the street doing their business in her community. And the police saw her watching 
and came to her door and demanded that she identify herself. The regulations that are proposed here will not stop an interaction like that from happening. They won't stop a woman who told me that she's regularly stopped in her Lexus driving to work and asked, whose car is this? This regulation won't stop that from happening. This regulation won't stop people like Mike Miller who are filming the police lawfully in their own communities from being confronted and intimidated. So we have a lot of work, work still to do. We want to address the gaps that are in this proposed regulation because we were all very happy when we heard that the province wanted to move to end police carding. And we were happy with the stated objectives of Minister Nathby. What we're concerned with today is that what has been proposed does not meet the stated goals of the ministry. And we're here to explain that and give that some more uh, context. So to do that, I'm going to turn first. Uh, and we will be taking questions afterwards, by the way. Uh, so I want to turn first to uh, Renu Mandani, who is the Chief Commissioner of the Ontario Human Rights Commission. The Ontario Human Rights Commission has come together with legal organizations, community advocates, academics, and concerned individuals to call on the provincial government to address racial profiling in street checks. Over the years, the OHRC has taken many steps at being aimed at identifying and eliminating racial discrimination. We continue to take a strong stand against all forms of racial profiling, including during street checks, sometimes called carding, across Ontario. Young, black, brown, and indigenous men especially feel the damage of carding. Many police organizations have raised concerns that the draft regulations go too far. But the OHRC and our partners here today think that the draft regulation has not gone far enough to prevent racial profiling. In particular, even where an officer is investigating a particular offense, racial profiling can happen in the course of conducting a street check. That's why it's concerning that the draft regulation's prohibitions, protections, and accountability mechanisms do not apply when police are investigating a specific offense. The Human Rights Code prohibits the police from casting their investigative net widely on racialized individuals when dealing with a vague description involving race. The draft regulation does not prohibit this, which means every black man in a hoodie can be unfairly questioned during an investigation of a crime committed somewhere else in their neighborhood, perhaps even many blocks away. Because of their background and experience, many racialized Ontarians, especially youth, don't feel safe asserting their rights to not answer questions, provide ID, or walk away during a street check by police. Although the draft regulation requires police to notify people of their right to leave, it does not require the police to notify them of their rights to not provide ID or answer questions. Detailed receipts are an effective tool for monitoring street checks but the draft regulation does not require police to put the reason for the street check in the receipt. The draft regulation allows police services to indefinitely retain personal information obtained through street checks. We believe that street check data that lacks a non-discriminatory explanation must be purged. The OHRC and our partners today will continue to offer input on how the regulation can make sure police services respect both the Human Rights Code and the Charter, but prohibit racial profiling. The public needs to trust the police, but racial profiling can quickly destroy that trust. Making the changes we're collectively requesting will help rebuild bridges between police and communities and make Ontario safer for all of us. Thank you very much, Rena. I'd like to welcome next Noah Mendelson, who is the director of the Equity Equality Program, excuse me, at the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Noah. Good morning. Thank you to you all for being here on this important issue. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has also been here on this issue for a number of years, uh, including our youth rights and policing program that we did with youth in racialized communities across the city including many, many submissions before the Toronto Police Services Board when they were considering this issue and how to address it. 
uh, and of course our engagement with the province, multiple consultations, submissions, and you have in your hands, some of you I have further copies, submissions now to the draft regulation proposed by the minister, which although helpful in some ways, is limited and does not go far enough. And I want to speak to that extremely briefly uh, and just mention a few critical points. As you heard, the scope of this proposed regulation is very limited. There are any number of police community interactions that are not covered by this regulation. Meaning that in the case of a specific criminal investigation, as you've heard, police are not governed by this regulation and accountability measures do not apply to those interactions. Meaning that in strictly arbitrary interactions, those two are not covered by this regulation, even though that is the very purpose that the minister stated he wished to achieve. And there are a number of other examples which you will find in our written submissions. Secondly, there are a number of rights protections written into the regulations, but together with those protections are exemptions, are general language, and are insufficient guidance to assist police in deciding whether or not to stop somebody, which unfortunately they frequently do and frequently target young black men, young aboriginal men, and racialized and marginalized people. In addition, there is a sore lack of protection for privacy. Not only is carding an issue of discrimination, it is a matter of liberty, which is protected under the Charter, the right to be free from arbitrary detention, and the right to privacy under Section 8 of the Charter. The privacy protections in this regulation are extremely limited, and the regulation does not do anything, and in fact seems to permit the indefinite retention of material and data that is collected about individuals, even if that information has nothing to do with the crime, even if it was collected in the most arbitrary manner. Finally, I want to mention, very importantly, that although the Charter has been around for over 30 years, and the Human Rights Code for even longer, carding has persisted, and it violates those protections. So if this regulation is going to be effective, it's not enough for it to have strong rules, it needs strong accountability measures. And we have proposed a number of them in our joint position and again in the materials that you'll have from CCLA. So I thank you again for being here and I hope the members of the community understand that we have serious concerns and that we join them in urging the minister to make the changes needed to really end crime. Thank you very much, Noah. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Councillor Joe Cressy, who's come to join us for the press conference. Hello, Councillor. Um, our next speaker from the Law Union of Ontario is Howard Morton. I have a real concern about the misapprehension that had, it was fine right after Renu spoke. <laughs> I have a real concern about a misapprehension that's been created in the media. I believe innocently. But it's been reported by several of you that community groups and people in communities support this regulation. What community groups reacted to, as we did, were the statements, public statements, made by the minister about ending Carter. There is not a single community group or affiliation that supports this regulation. That's right. If I'm wrong about that, let us know who supports it and give us a chance to, to change their mind. But <laughs> there is no support for this regulation because this regulation falls far short of the minister's rhetoric with respect to his intentions. Thank you. Someone who I'm sure many of you know by now who's been advocating around the issue of carding and larger, larger issues of police brutality and racial profiling is Nia Singh. Nia is the head of the Osgood Society Against in Institutional Injustice, and he is our next speaker. Nia. Thank you, Desmond. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Unfortunately, street checks have been characterized as a tool to solve crime. But what everyone has to remember is the way street checks and carding play out 
is the targeting of innocent people of color for no apparent reason. This violates section nine of our charter. And if we cannot distinguish between a criminal investigation that is legitimate and a stop of innocent people, then we have a serious problem. That's right. The regulations currently cloud the issue of criminal context and non-criminal context. And it's imperative that this be clarified. Minister Nakfi has taken steps to stop the arbitrary detention by his statement. But her strides are needed to complete the goal and complete the objective stated by the minister. The police have valuable tools to solve crime. There is no need for the police to violate our constitution, break the law, and abuse vulnerable people for the sake of their perceived duties. In particular, these regulations would not stop the many instances of carding that have taken place, and particularly the 11 times that I've been carded, only once will this regulation stop, which means 10 times out of 11, carding will go unaddressed and unregulated. It is important that the gains we've made to this point are not thrown away by an insufficient regulation with a limited scope and numerous exemptions. Our police owe the public a responsibility to keep them safe. Our minister has taken that task, and our premier must ensure that this clear objective of stopping arbitrary detention occurs. Thank you. Thank you, Nia. Our final speaker this morning is Gordon Cressy, who is heading up the Concerned Citizens Against Carding Coalition. Gordon. Morning. Morning. When 50 of us convened last June in this very spot to ask the Police Services Board in Toronto to end carding, we sensed something important was happening. When a reporter at that event asked those who had been carded to put up their hand, every black person in the room put up their hand. No one who was white did. We knew then that the facts bore out racial profile. When 72 hours later, John Tory said it was time to permanently end carding, we understood people were listening. When our group of 50 became 7,000, in a few hours' notice, we knew the community was listening. When we realized that four of the 50 people involved of us at the start were former provincial cabinet ministers from all three political parties, including Alvin Curling, Marianne Chambers, Zanena Conde, all black, and the former Attorney General, Roy McMurtry, who made it very clear, very clear, that this was an invasion of the Charter of Rights and would not hold up. We knew the time had come. The challenge is very clear to our minister. We do not need another generation of young black people, of young brown people, of young indigenous people to grow up the way their parents were often carded. Our quest and our challenge to the minister is to get the policy and the guidelines in sync with each other. When the minister stood up in the provincial legislature and said it was time to end carding, and all people from all parties said yes, <coughs> we knew we were on the right track. <coughs> the simple point is this. The draft regulations have to meet the challenge 
that the policy states. If that occurs, history will look at this minister as saying, he listened and he led. It is time to seal the deal. We are not going away. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gordon, and to all the speakers. Before we open up for questions, I'd like to note a couple of things. Uh, the first is that we talk a lot about how this kind of practice of carding affects people in the African Canadian and Caribbean communities, that is, black people. But as you have heard from some of the other speakers here, others are disproportionately targeted by police carding, including indigenous people, including other racialized groups, including South Asians, including the homeless, who are very, very visible and exposed on our streets and subject to police scrutiny every day, including people with mental health issues who come into contact with the police. So we have to remember the broader context here of who's being affected disproportionately by police carding. Another thing I wanted to mention was that we have seen over the many last recent months in Toronto several documented and in some cases videotaped instances of racial profiling and police brutality. This is happening under a context of the police telling us that carding has been suspended. So carding has been suspended, and yet every day we see more proof that police are stopping people for no reason, asking them for their identification, and in the worst cases, beating and arresting those people and charging them with crimes for interactions whose purpose was never made clear. So beyond what we need to do with this regulation and carding and seal the deal, as Gordon said, we need to continue fighting to stop racial profiling in our communities and to stop police brutality. The signatories to this uh, statement about the draft regulation include the African Canadian Legal Clinic, the campaign to stop police carding, the Black Action Defense Committee, the Criminology Department at Ryerson University, the Peel Coalition Against Racialized Discrimination, and the South Asian Bar Association, including many, many community individuals. We are asking Minister Nakvi and Premier Wynn to hear the criticisms that have been put forward about this regulation and make the necessary changes to actually achieve their stated goal to end police carding. We'll take your questions.